So here's a quick demonstration of model logics, which is a conceptual estimating tool. So model logics is broken down into three main components. You've got your projects area. This is all your historical data that you will be using to drive your conceptual estimate off of. It's got a reports area for building reports and doing some basic data analysis. And then finally, it's got a modeling section for producing cost models, which can be analyzed updated, and then ultimately used to produce conceptual estimates. So I'll just talk a little bit about the project, historical project area. So your historical projects can have all sorts of attributes on them. They can have, um, for example, a size, and the size can be in any kind of units depending on the type of work that you're completing. Also the date the project occurred on and the location that it occurred on. All these attributes can be used to search projects as part of your historical record to find projects that you want to use in your cost model. To create a cost model, all you do is create a new cost model and give it a size. And I'll give this one 100,000 square feet. So I'm using square feet as my uh, measurement of my projects, and it could be anything. Give it a date when you want to incur your project. And then give it an address. So this might be in Fresno, California. Then you just click on the spreadsheet tab and you start dragging your projects that you want to include in the cost model on there. So I'll pull the first three over, for example. Now you'll see that I've got this set up at uniform at level two, but I could easily switch that to uniform at level one, drag that over and get a summarized view. Model logic supports all sorts of different coding structures, so you're not limited to uniform at. You can use CSI, division, or any uh, sort of custom coding that you might like. So your model logics has gone and calculated my total cost per square foot at $162.06. I can see what the total cost is as well. And it's coming in at $16 million is my conceptual estimate. And it's using these other projects as the basis for that estimate. If I just switch back to uniform at level two, I can start looking at some individual numbers. Let me just get rid of the total, look at unit cost again. And let's say, for example, that I wanted to make some changes. So let's look at this superstructure. And if I click on the range tab, I can see superstructure up here has got a range of uh, $29 a square foot all the way down to $21.75. So that's a quite, a quite a big range, especially for one that's driving such a large component of my cost. So if I click back to spreadsheet, I might be able to make some assumptions and say that, for example, that this project three is actually an outlier and I don't want to include it. So I just click on that value, exclude it from my cost model, and now my overall model has been adjusted. And again, I go back to the range, and you can see it's a much narrower band. Alternately, I could go through and make some direct edits. And I could say, for example, that the site preparation is not going to be $9.75. It's going to be closer to $15. Make a direct edit, and then my overall value gets updated accordingly. I can always undo that if I want to as well by resetting the cell back to its original value. There's all sorts of other reports that I can get out of here, uh, out of model logics. I can look at variances, for example. This is looking at all the elements and how big the variance is by unit cost. I can switch this to uniform at level one as well if I like. And again, I can get some statistical analysis if I'm looking at uh, what the variance is, the maximum and minimum values across my historical data. So that's a quick introduction to model logics. And uh, overall, it's a real easy to use tool for preparing conceptual estimates when you don't have a lot of scope on your projects. And uh, I want to get these out quickly.